G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Saturday here in Australia, so sort of Friday night, maybe even sort of uh, Saturday morning in other parts of the world, particularly over in the States, and Uniswap. It's the, you know, the thing that's on everyone's lips at the moment, everyone's talking about it. And so they finally brought out their own uh, governancy coin uh, and it's, it's pumped pretty well. Obviously it's had a bit of a retracement, but a lot of people are expecting it to go higher. Now look, I don't uh, have any Uniswap coins. I didn't use Uniswap at all. Uh, I did sort of have a look at it, but the fees were just, yeah, too much. And it's been the common theme uh, with anything that's kind of Ethereum-based, unfortunately. It just kind of priced me out of it, so it wasn't worth it for me. Uh, you know, could I have made some money on these tokens if I had have, you know, got in on some of those things? Yes. Could I have maybe, you know, got lucky and, you know, 100x my money on some of the things that were on uh, Uniswap. Yep, I probably could have. But again, it was just the uh, the the gas fees in Ethereum that just put me off straight away. So yep, I've missed out, I guess. But there are a lot of people questioning whether Uniswap has any true value. Not the site itself, the Uni token, I should say. And I would have to agree, you know, exactly, you know, not so much that I agree that uh, it's worthless, but what is its intrinsic sort of value? What exactly is it gonna do besides just be a governance token? You know, we'll have to wait and see. I guess it could be considered to something similar as like KyberSwap, I suppose. You know, KyberSwap is a liquidity provider though. Uh, and I'm, you know, I, I like KyberSwap. Is Uniswap something, uh, sorry, not KyberSwap, uh, Kyber Network. Is Uniswap something similar? Yeah, I suppose a little bit, not exactly the same, but definitely, you know, a, uh, a DEX, I guess, you know, the, the, uh, a decentralized exchange sort of thing. But anyway, let's have a look here. So it got up to $8.60 uh, before retracing. So uh, Uni, which launched less than 48 hours ago, has rallied from around $1 to $8. So that's, that's a really good gain. You know, no one's complaining with that in a short period. After an impressive eight-fold gain, the token started to pull back, but trading volume suggests traders have their eyes set on higher prices. Uh, wouldn't surprise me at all. As Uni started to make a parabolic rally from $1 onwards, the funding rate of the cryptocurrency across major exchanges turned negative. Traders, the majority of which were at FTX exchange, were heavily shorting Uni in anticip anticipation of a strong pullback. These traders might have thought that most holders of the $400 or 400 Uni tokens uh, that they got from the AirSwap uh, dropped to its users would want to cash in after their value reached uh, $2,640. Uh, I've seen a few videos on YouTube and people on Twitter and that and they've been speaking uh, and a lot of people have sold uh, their uni tokens but they were you know not overly happy that the ethereum fees kind of wiped out you know a reasonable percent of their gains that they made from uni and likewise I've heard a number of other people uh, who have the uni token said they're just going to hold them and they're waiting for you know 15 20 dollars and things like that so you know that's one hell of a, a gain for you know, free tokens essentially. And I do like that Uniswap did it that way. I like that they didn't hold the majority of them for themselves and pass it on to their uh, investors and things like that. They did pass on some and they held some. Obviously you have to, you know, no one's doing anything for free. But I like the fact that they basically gave out a majority of their tokens to people who simply use the platform. So well done Uniswap. And again, we'll have to wait and see whether the token is really sort of worth anything and when it, whether it plays a part uh, in the you know, in the exchange going forwards. Uh, and yeah, look, I am disappointed that I didn't get any and, you know, get the 8x pump. That would have been nice on, you know, free trades but on um, free coins. But again, we need to remember those coins are free and I think they were handing out roughly 400 to each person. I would say over the last few sort of weeks to a month or so, you would have easily spent that uh, in Ethereum gas fees anyway. So I don't know whether you've really made anything or not. You know, we'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. Let's go over to the cryptocurrency market though. All right, 357 billion. We're just sort of stuck around that $350 billion mark at the moment. And we're all waiting to see, you know, what kind of moves are going to be made. Sorry, I'll get rid of that. Don't need uni up there. And Bitcoin, so 10,000 sort of 900, we've been hanging around here for quite some time. Uh, and I'm, I'm really not sure which way it's gonna go. But in saying that, 
today I did do my uh, sort of regular buys. So today I bought Bitcoin. Well, I didn't buy Bitcoin. I put in uh, an order for around sort of $10,465. I'm waiting to see if that'll get filled. Uh, I did just straight out buy some Ethereum. I bought some Polkadot and I bought some Cosmos. So let's go and have a look at Polkadot. So it's down 1.6%. Uh, and it's been down a little bit from sort of, you know, it, it's all time sort of highs and it's all time highs. It's not really that old. It's only been out for a little while, but it does seem like it's forming sort of a bit of a base here. This this is going to be roughly the average price around kind of the five dollar mark uh, roughly at the moment. And we can say that we had the, you know, the exuberance and the enthusiasm. We had a sell off. Uh, and now it's sort of starting to come up and find its sort of base price. So I'm still confident uh, in Polkadot. I like what they're doing. You know, they're, they're a good project and the guy who uh, is heading up Polkadot here is an ex-Ethereum uh, co-founder. Pretty smart guy, Gavin Woods. He, he, he's very smart and, you know, they say he, lo he really did a lot of the building stuff and a lot of the... Uh, yeah, a lot of the smart stuff. I don't know about that. That's probably not a fair call. But anyway, he put a lot into Ethereum and he's quite a uh, clever guy. So I've bought some more Polkadot and I'll likely continue to buy some more Polkadot uh, for a while. It'll become one of my regular purchases. But likewise, Cosmos. So Adam, I did exactly the same. I bought some Adam. And again, we can see it's just kind of roughly starting to find its sort of range. And same thing around that kind of $4 mark. I don't mind that I bought a little bit higher than $4. Uh, I'm not too worried as I believe both uh, Adam and Polkadot, uh, they're undervalued in the grand scheme of things. They're very new, uh, they're blockchain sort of agnostic, you know what I mean? They can work with multiple other chains. Interoperability is really big for both of these. So I think in the future, uh, there's def definitely gonna be plenty of upside. Now, that doesn't mean that it's all upside from here. It absolutely could be more downside. Uh, you know, these tokens, they are, yeah, unfortunately, we're still, all of these tokens are really based around Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin goes up, you know, these will sort of go up with it. They will, you know, bleed off a little bit. And if Bitcoin goes down, then they're going to bleed off even harder. Really, the altcoins, they do the best when Bitcoin is traveling sideways. And let's go have a look at Bitcoin. And what's Bitcoin sort of doing now at the moment? It's trading sideways a little bit. Has been for a few days now. So everyone's sort of waiting to see. And again, it's roughly that kind of $11,000 mark. We're getting you know, rejected hard from it. But in saying that, when we dip down anywhere near that kind of $10,000 range, it's just being bought up oh so quickly. And at the moment, it's being bought up even quicker. So again, now we can say that roughly the $10,700 level, that's as low as it's going to go at the moment. So we're really going to have to sort of just wait and see what's going to happen. It is the weekend and it's the beginning of the weekend for places over in Australia, uh, in the States. Uh, it's sort of halfway through the weekend here in Australia. And we haven't had too much of a sell-off uh, for Friday or Saturday. So maybe Sunday is going to be the day where we have a bit of a sell-off. Or, look, maybe this is the weekend where it just, you know, it pumps or, you know, just travels sideways. It's so hard to know. You know, I'm not Nostradamus. I'm not a savant. I can't predict the future. But when I, you know, when I'm unsure of how I think things are going to go, I've got to get away from these shorter time frames. Generally, go to the weeklies and the monthlies, or you can stay on the dailies. And I've said this a number of times before. I'm just going to zoom out. What is the bigger picture? And the bigger picture is for quite some time now. We were down here. We've just been going upwards. Are there pullbacks? Absolutely there's pullbacks. But in the grand scheme of things, we're still on an upward trajectory and we really have been, you know, since again, way back here, way after, you know, the, the not way after, just after the pandemic sort of first set in, then it's just been finding its way back up. But look, so have other markets. You know, we're tightly, we're tightly correlated with uh, the NASDAQ, so the S&P 500. We're also fairly tightly correlated with gold. So as long as gold and, you know, the NASDAQ generally do pretty good. So we're obviously waiting on further stimulus reports from over in America and things like that. If they do well, then Bitcoin's going to do well. And unfortunately, if they don't do well, 
then Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in generally aren't going to do well, particularly the Dixie. We've got to keep an eye on that and see what's happening with the US dollar. If the US dollar starts to gain ground, well, all assets don't do as well. Uh, and if the Dixie starts to lose ground and it's been on a downward spiral for quite some time, then all assets will do well. People would ha rather have their money in assets than have it in the dollar. Uh, and they're the things that we're really watching out for. And I'll probably bring that up in tomorrow's thing. We'll have a look at the Dixie, compare it to uh, assets and things like that. And we'll be able to see that when the Dixie, you know, goes down, has been going down for a while, assets go up. Assets are things like, you know, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, gold, and even stocks. But then when the dollar starts to perform well, everyone takes their money out of the dollar. But look, in the real grand scheme of things, I think the dollar is dead. I don't, I don't think fiat is going to uh, last too much longer. You know, it, it's been steadily declining for a long, long time. I can remember when I was young that, you know, you would have your money in a bank and you could get 15%, 18% on your money in banks when I was really young. Now, I was too young to get that money, but I remember my mum and my father and things like that, they would get that on their money. So that's why it was. Everyone used to say, save your money, put it into the bank, you know, and it'll let it make money for you. And that's what everyone has done. But it has just been getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse ever since I was a young boy. You know, I'm a 40-year-old man now, and the last place you're going to put any money is in the bank. They can't do anything for you. I think at the moment here in Australia, it's uh, 0.025 or something like It's something ridiculous. It's not even a percent. You can't even get a percent on your money. You're going to get less than 1%. So why would you put it in the bank? You know, I've got, you know, much more putting my money into crypto. Has it hurt when it's pulled back? In this move here, I was a... a that really really hurts so I'll go in here so this move from here to here that really stung I'm not gonna lie I lost 50% uh, yeah of my profits around oh, not quite a little bit a little bit less but you know roughly sort of I'd say more 40 ish percent probably is more closer but about 40% of all my profits were lost just in a couple of days. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still in profit. I'm not even anywhere near not being in profit, but that did hurt, you know, seeing something that was 40% bigger than what it was, you know, 48 hours before, that really hurt. But I can tell you right now, if I had my money uh, just stashed in the bank, would I have seen a 40% drop? No, <laughs> but I wouldn't see uh, the profits that I'm at now either. I'd be, you know, not even a 1% profit from having my money in the bank. Well, I'm not going to ramble on too much longer. Please uh, hit like uh, and subscribe if you like my material. Please let me know what you think uh, Bitcoin's going to do. And do you believe that we're still highly correlated to things like the NASDAQ, the S&P 500 and gold? And do you think all of the above, all the assets, are really linked to how well the US dollar performs? If the Dixie you know, does well, will assets pull back or vice versa? Love to know your thoughts. I'm always here for open discussions. Uh, if there's anything you'd like me to cover, any kind of coins you're interested in, obviously, you know, I can go through my portfolio and there's no problem with that. I've really diversified my portfolio. I've sort of gone for the little old lady uh, investment method. I've, you know, put, you know, the bulk of my money into things that I believe are going to do well, but I've really spread my uh, money across a number of different sort of, uh, you know, currencies, platforms, whatever you want to call it, coins. I think I have over 30 different coins. But around about sort of 75% of my portfolio is in Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. All the other ones, they are much smaller. Some are bigger now because I haven't sold anything. So uh, what is it? Synthetics Network, I think that was about 1% of my portfolio. Now it's worth around about 4%. Chainlink was worth about sort of 3%, 2% of my portfolio. Now it's about 4 or 5% of my portfolio. And again, that's not so much that I've really bought any more of them. It's just their value has increased. All right. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. And I'll see you next time.